zero, where zero is the additive value case. Then P is called as the inverse of K. Here also again the same concept. Directly we don't know what will be the inverse. So what you are going to do? You are going to assume it to be a random one, and you are going to find what is the corresponding inverse, as we did for our identity. Okay. So write fourth one. Inverse. Inverse. Right. For all A belongs to me. For all A belongs to me. There exists B belongs to me. For all A belongs to me. There exists B belongs to me. Such that A plus B is equal to zero. Here zero is there. I take it. This is the condition for inverse. Now that now we have identified what is this B now. Okay, so right, let let A plus B equal to zero. Let A plus B equal to zero. Write the matrix A. What is the matrix A? A one, A one plus B one, A one plus B one. Will I give you B or A one? So, if you add A with the correspond. 
corresponding inverse, you must get the corresponding identity. If you get like that, then the inverse is a right one, otherwise the inverse is a wrong one. Can you understand now how to identify the inverse? So in addition, all the four conditions are satisfied. Commutativity, associativity, identity exists and inverse exists. What is the next one you have to check? Conditions are the multiplication. Scalar multiplication. Has anyone written up to this? Shall we continue? Right? Under scalar multiplication. Under scalar multiplication. Subtopic. Prove your first one. What is the first condition? Ma? Alpha into x plus y should be equal to alpha, alpha x plus alpha, 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 alpha. Here instead of x and y, you have the matrices as a and b. So write first condition. To prove. To prove. Alpha into a plus b is equal to alpha a plus alpha b. For all a comma b belongs to b. For all a comma b belongs to b. And alpha belongs to r. And alpha belongs to r. So actually the proof is very easy. We are going to make use of only the ordinary multiplication concept in our matrices. Start with the LHS. So alpha into. So what is the matrix A? A1. A1 plus B1. What is the next one? A1 plus B1. A1. Plus the matrix B. B1. A2. A2 plus B2. A2 plus B2. A2. Start with the LHS. Very good, right? So, 
the norm of y. How can you write what is the reason? Because there is only magnitude addition and scalar multiplication. Alpha is going to belong to R. What is R? Real number. So it is possible for us to split it and find. What will be the final step? If you take alpha outside, what will happen?
much disturbance in ceric plasma kindly avoid it what is the third one you have to prove alpha into beta x should be equal to alpha beta into x should be equal to alpha into beta x in the similar way we have to split and write that terms because it is again only going to be a matrix multiplication with scalars okay so write third one to prove to prove to prove within bracket alpha beta alpha beta close the bracket into a is equal to alpha into after alpha open a bracket beta a beta a close the bracket prove it start with lhs start with lhs
If it is so, then we call W to be a subspace of the vector space. Okay, make a note. Make a note. Single can set zero. Single can set zero and B or B or or trivial subspaces or trivial subspaces of B. Trivial subspaces of B. What is the meaning of trivial, ma? Obvious one. The single can set zero. And the entire set B itself is a subspace. Because what about B? B is a vector space. That is our assumption. So it can be said also to be a subspace. Because what is the condition for a subspace? That should be a vector space. Or B is a vector space. So we can say that B is also a subspace. And single can set zero. That is going to have only one element zero. So with that, all the axioms will be satisfied. So that is also can be said to be a subspace of B. Okay, we are asked to write any two subspaces of a given vector B means this is the direct one. The single can set zero and the corresponding B. Both will be a obvious subspaces. Okay, for other things there are conditions to check whether this is a subspace or not. How many conditions are there? Hey, but in subspaces you are not going to make your check all the eight conditions. You are going to take the help of the theorem and using the theorem you are going to check only one condition to verify whether it is going to be a subspace or not. By according to definition you have to check all the eight axioms. But that is not necessary. Now we are going to take two theorems. According to that theorem you check only one condition that is enough to prove that it is, that it is going to be a subspace. Okay, so take down. Theorem 1. Theorem 1. So right, necessary, necessary and sufficient condition, necessary and sufficient condition for a subset, for a subset to be, to be a subspace, to be a subspace. So take a statement. Let B be a vector space. Let B be a vector space over F. Let B be a vector space over F. Full stop. A non-empty subset. A non-empty subset. W of B. A non-empty subset. W of B is. Yes, a subspace of B. If yes, a subspace of B. If and only if. If and only if. What is the short form? IFF. IFF means if and only if. Short form. First condition. Zero belongs to W. Second one. X y belongs to W implies X plus y belongs to W. Third one, X belongs to W, comma, alpha belongs to L implies alpha X belongs to W. Alpha X belongs to So this is a necessary and sufficient condition for a set to be a subspace. So according to this theorem, how many conditions are given? One in three conditions. What is the meaning of the first one now? Zero belongs to W. What is the meaning is that? It should be a non-empty set. Okay, at least one element should be there in that one. So only we are telling it to be zero. Normally zero will be a all the sets. Okay, but well, it should be a non-empty one. That is the meaning of first condition. What is the meaning of second one? Addition. Addition condition should be satisfied. X by belongs to W means what is the meaning? X plus Y should also belong to W. What is the third one? Share multiplication. Alpha belongs to F and X belongs to W should be like Alpha 
alpha x belongs to alpha. If this three conditions are satisfied, you can say that it is going to be a subspace. No need to verify all the x x according to this thing. Okay? This may be a two-bar question also. Write down the necessary and sufficient condition for this set to be a subspace. Can you write a statement giving all this three conditions? Is it clear now? Yes. So we have done here two. Here two. Here two. Let let B be a vector space. Let B be a vector space over a field F. Let B be a vector space over a field F. Full stop. A non-empty, a non-empty subset, a non-empty subset. W of B. W of B is is a subspace of B is a subspace of B. If and only if if and only if x y belongs to W x y belongs to W and <coughs> alpha beta belongs to F alpha beta belongs to F. implies alpha x plus beta y belongs to w alpha x plus beta y belongs to w <coughs> so what is the meaning of this statement ma huh? w will be called as a subspace if and only if alpha x plus beta y belongs to w what is the meaning of if and only if both the ways are the same If and only if. If W is going to be a subspace, then this condition is satisfied. If this condition is satisfied, then W will be a subspace. If and only if that is the meaning. Okay, both the ways the result is only good. So according to our definition, A tends to show that. According to theorem one, we are supposed to prove three things. But according to our theorem two, how many things you have to prove? Only one. What is the condition you have to prove? Alpha x plus beta y belongs to W. If you prove that one, that alone is enough to check whether it is a subspace or not. When we are over one par point, surely you know, that is not mentioned in the statement. That is an obvious one. When you write the definition itself, we say that W is a non-empty subspace. Yes or no? So when we are doing the proof for the problems, first step we have to prove that it is a non-empty space. What is the meaning of non-empty? At least one element will be there in this. You have to give that proof. Okay. After that, only you have to give the proof of alpha x plus beta y. Even though that is not mentioned, that is a compulsory condition because that is the beginning of our definition itself. W B A non-empty subset. No need to worry for that one. Now, in all the sets, zero will be belonging to this. Okay. But in the set, now we have to depend on our own. If our base of the element will be there. Zero can't be found in the set of values. Therefore, this can only be only a rare case where in the set we find zero will be excluded, but it is a very 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 rare case. But in all the other cases, whatever set you are going to define, zero will be an obvious value. So with that element itself, we can say that it is a non-empty. Okay, then we can give the proof for alpha x plus beta y belongs to W. So clear now? So how to prove it is a subspace? What is the first condition you have to prove? Don't say zero. Even though we know it is going to be zero, we should not say zero. We say the condition. What you should say? It should be a non-empty set. Okay, then you have to prove that it is a non-empty set. What is the second condition? Alpha x plus beta y should belong to W. If these two conditions are satisfied, then you can say that it is going to be a subspace. If you are interested in that, then you can apply the other one. But problems if you do this one alone, it is enough. No need to do anything else. Okay, so we start the problems. So take note. First one. First one. Prove that. Prove that. Double equal to the same. 
So direct F A equal to the same. Find as triple F triple order pair A zero zero such that A belongs to R such that A belongs to R yes 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 subspace yes yes subspace of of R three over R subspace of R three over R. At an interpreted, interpreted geometrically, interpreted geometrically, interpreted geometrically.
zero. That is the that is the thing you are writing in the terms of x and y, x, y and z. Okay, are there like from some number? Are there any more inside the line? It will become a geometrical solution. So right? Since since y and z coordinates, since y and z coordinates of w of w is zero. Is zero, comma, geometrically, geometrically, W, geometrically, W, consists of all points. Geometrically, W, consists of all points on the x-axis, on the x-axis, in R P space, R Q. Or pure space. Okay, this is a geometric representation. So y and z are the elements. So that is why we say that we have x axis. So that is why. Okay. So take down. We we'll go for one more problem. Right? Y. Second problem. Y. V is equal to R cube. Y. V is equal to R cube. Verify. Verify whether verify whether W equal to the set again triple order pair A one A two A three such that two A one minus seven A two plus two A three equal to zero. Yes. 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 Subspace or not? Yes. Yeah. Subspace or not? Yes. Yes. Subspace or not? So understand how it is defined. How you are defining that? Yo. Where is it? Two dimension or three dimension? Again, three dimension. Okay, how you write that triple A one, A two, A three. It is just not mentioned it to be A one, A two, A three. This A one, A two, A three should satisfy one particular condition. What is the condition? Two A one minus seven A two plus two A three should be equal to zero. In the condition of satisfy anomaly, that A one, A two, A three must be done with the triple A. Okay, A one, A two, A three belongs to R one. Any integer I give you. Okay, our number. All integers in our circle are going to be four. Okay, our number. Any number of integers we have to find which satisfies the condition two a one minus seven a two plus two a three equal to zero. If the condition satisfies, our number is a one a two a three. We have to find our circle. We have to find our number. Can you understand how it is defined? Yes. Now start with the truth. What is the first one? You have to prove. Non empty. So, which in any way is an obvious element? Say it out. Zero. How do you define zero? Zero. 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 Three dimension. Triple. Triple order. Anna, it is the simplest order. Okay. Your condition here is equal to. What is the condition? It is set there. So, now, any condition satisfy or no? This condition should be satisfied. Upon your assumption, what is a one? Zero. What is a two? Zero. What is a three? Zero. Whether this condition is satisfied or not? Yes. So only we can say that this belongs to W. Okay. Previous problem we have solved. In what case does it belong to W? So we have to make restrictions in the area. But if the restrictions are removed, so we check this parallel condition. If the condition is satisfied, our number two may be belong to W. Otherwise, it will not belong. Clearly, clearly, zero is equal to zero 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 belongs to that. Belongs to that. Now, what are supposed to prove? Alpha is the area where it should belong to that. How do you assume case? Ma? Case element is the area where it should belong to that. Case element is the area where it should belong to that.